Are we able to see what we're what's being uh, in the video, James? Good question. Is that what that little box is? I'm showing you up here. Our image is coming. Okay, I see you. Okay, yeah, you should be good. We won't see you on there. Okay, I was just curious if what we, we could see what's being broadcast. Oh, you can see what you see there is what's being broadcast. Okay, got it. Okay. You are good. All right, thank you, James. I'd like to welcome everybody to this public meeting. It's a public meeting uh, with Frontier Communications to discuss uh, many aspects of a project that they currently have going on in town. We'll be talking about the, the schedule for the project, the scope of the work, um, public outreach that, the, that has been done for the project, uh, installation and restoration for the project, and probably some other asset, uh, facts, assets, assets of the project we'll be talking about. Um, my name is Gary Furstenberg, I'm the town engineer. Um, this project has been going on for probably about a month, I would say by now. And town hall, for given how big the project is, I've issued about 75 permits for the project uh, throughout town. Uh, they're working, the project encompasses about a hundred different locations uh, throughout the town. And given the number of, uh, of, of uh, locations that we're working and the number of phone calls we, we've received, it's been pretty low. But we've actually received a number of phone calls you know, regarding different aspects of the project. There are people where they have questions about, again, like I say, the scope, the schedule, installation, restoration. And that's why we wanted to bring Frontier in to tell us their story as to what's going to happen, what's happening with the project, why it's going on, and, and what you can expect as a resident uh, of the town. And with that, I will turn the project over to the Frontier team and David C. Martin. Thank you, Gary. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to the people of Newington tonight. Um, I brought a few key members of our team with me tonight. Starting at my left, I've got uh, Jeff Johnson and Alicia Jolly from the community engagement team. And then to my right, I've got Joe Ferriolo from Construction, Frontier Construction, and Jermaine Allen, also from Frontier Construction. And last but certainly not least, we've got John Kelly from Parkside Construction, who is our primary construction vendor involved in this project. So what I'd like to do tonight is to walk you through a little bit of a presentation that is describing the project that we're doing. And uh, hopefully you'll get some good insight out of it. And obviously if there's up any questions, we can answer them later on. Okay, so basically this is a, a project to, to place Fiber to homes across Newington. Further away, better? Okay, so this project, what we're doing here is we're looking to place fiber and terminals to enable all of the residents in town to get frontier fiber based service. Hey, why don't we use that microphone? Yeah, that microphone. Is that better? That seems to work. Okay, so what we're looking to do is, is place fiber throughout the neighborhoods of Newington to enable, and I apologize, Alicia, I'm blocking you out. Can you move over a little bit? Um, so when, when all completed, uh, this project in Newington is gonna serve roughly 6,500 single family homes and single business units throughout town. Um, and what one of the benefits is obviously these fiber-based services are going to be available to everyone. And anybody that doesn't know, fiber is kind of ubiquitous. The bandwidth is endless. It's only limited by the current electronics put on the end of it. Currently, we're starting with a, a range of tier options, um, ranging from 50 megabits up to a full gigabit of service. And that's a synchronous, up, up speed and down speed. Um, the majority of the work we're going to be doing for this project is going to be on pole lines. Right? As, as all of you are aware, there's poles running through the entire town. Most of our work will be done on those pole lines. But there will be some neighborhoods where um, facilities have been placed on the ground. Uh, we'll be working in the underground or in some cases we'll be digging as well. Not moving. Here we go. Oh, got ahead of it. 
All right, so as I stated up front, our network that we're constructing is really a 100% fiber optic network. There's gonna be fiber optics placed right from our central office at 1567 Main Street out to every house in town that's gonna to buy our service. Um, some of the benefits of fiber-based services are that once fiber's in the household, many multiple devices can be connected to it and all use that same bandwidth. Um, one of the other benefits obviously is that, you know, fiber optics um, is, is a very unlimited bandwidth service. So it will increase the value of, of properties and it'll make multiple properties more enticing for people to want to move into. Um, again, I stated that we'll be offering services up to 1.0 gigabits of level. And that is again, a synchronous service. It's the same speed download as it is upload. Um, it's going to enable not so much the you know, Newington's rural, but it'll enable rural communities to be more competitive with more urban uh, uh, cities. Um, it'll also allow businesses to be more entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial because they'll have uh, higher bandwidth and they can do more than some of the businesses that are on lower bandwidth type services. Um, so what are some of the reasons why this project makes sense for, for the town? Obviously, uh, super fast speeds is what we're pushing with this product. Uh, reliability, right? Fiber is not susceptible to weather. Uh, about the only thing that really can damage the fiber is um, if, a, if a car hits a pole, right? But then everything will be uh, impacted by that type of event um, or power outage. But again, if there's a power outage in a facility, uh, most all the other services will be out as well. Um, there's no bottlenecking, unlike some of the cable networks that are deployed around. Um, we're not in a shared bandwidth scenario. Every resident that buys our service will get the service level that they have purchased. Um, the equipment, um, it's small and it, it's discreet. Many of you might have known some of our previous deployments where we were replacing VRATs on poles where the cabinets were rather large. In this particular deployment, as you'll see further in, this, in the presentation, the equipment is very small. And then at the end, in the customer premise, the customer's premise equipment is also very small. Um, and again, it's only limited by the current technology of the equipment that we put on it because fiber has unlimited bandwidth and unlimited uses. Um, and because again, it's not susceptible to weather, uh, it's less opportunity for that service to degrade, unlike some of the legacy copper services that we may have deployed in the past. Um, again, it, for us, it's less expensive to deploy. And in turn, we can pass that savings on to our customers. And the services that they will purchase from us are less expensive and more uh, robust. And unlike some, um, you know, satellite type services, there's no, it's not susceptible to interference. It's a complete 100% connection from the fiber optics from our central office to your home. So what do we, what are we here in Newington to do? Well, first and, for, first and foremost, we're here to present to you what we're looking to do and what we have been doing over the last month or two. But secondly, we're also looking to partner with the town where, where it makes sense for both of us. Um, Gary mentioned up front that we've been doing a lot of permitting in areas where we've had to do some buried excavations. Uh, they've been outstanding working with us to you know, facilitate those permits in a timely fashion. So we thank you for that. Um, you know, we'll work with them and they with us on any municipal projects, either state or local. Um, and then lastly, you know, where our services are available, you know, they can basically help us by re recommending that service to all the residents of Newington. Um, how do we partner with our communities? Well, you know, Frontier is a company that came from AT&T, which is a company that came from SBC, which is a company that came from SNET. And SNET has been around since the turn of the century in 1900s. So as such, our company has employees that live in this town and all the surrounding towns. So you can take solace in the fact that should your service go out and you need assistance, there'll be employees that'll be coming out that are 
directly uh, residents in this town or adjacent towns. Um, and we've also got procedures in place that we'll talk about in a minute for you guys to get questions answered. Um, and again, our long-term success is yours, right? We're here to serve you and hopefully you're here to, to purchase from us. And it's a relationship that I think can grow and, and succeed over time. All right, so how does this service work? Um, as I stated previously, it's, it's a 100% fiber connection. It starts in our central office over on Main Street. And then what it does is it runs up fiber all the way to a fiber distribution hub in the neighborhood. And I'll, I'll show you pictures of that here in a minute. And then it cross connects to another piece of fiber cable that goes to a terminal. Now that terminal is probably 90 to 95% of the time going to be located on a pole, but in the other five to 10% of the time, those terminals are gonna be placed in a pedestal or a ground mounted box that we'll show you in a little bit, flush with the ground. And then lastly, from that terminal, we place on the operations side of the house, the operations team upon service purchase, they will run a fiber drop from one of the ports in that terminal right into your home and then deploy the OL, ONT, the optical network terminal. Um, so again, from, from our team, we did introductions at the top, but again, I'm the director of engineering. So my engineers are responsible for designing this network. Uh, we've also got a program uh, project manager, Keith Casey, uh, on the construction side, which is really where the rubber hits the road in this whole uh, endeavor. Uh, Rick John is our director of, uh, of construction and the construction manager for the area who's here tonight, Jermaine Allen. Uh, he's gonna be the guy you call if you've got questions or issues. And lastly, you know, our, our construction vendor uh, is Parkside and with us tonight from Parkside is John Kelly. And I don't know if John's just outside of the range or camera or, or not, is, is he in? Uh, might be right on the okay, so <laughs> we'll get John to speak in a minute. <laughs> he's not gonna escape. All right, so as I stated, right, our, this, these pictures here are pictures of our fiber distribution hubs. Um, now, the first picture is, is a view from the side. And you, as you can see, it, it's very narrow and it's barely wider than the utility pole that it's placed on. Uh, and then the middle picture there is a picture of the hub as it's seen from the street. And typically they'll be placed at walk-up height, which is about 36 inches off the ground. And the total height is about three feet max, uh, maximum in, in height. Now the right picture is the similar view, but that red box up, top, up, up high is an alternate installation that we've done as needed uh, throughout the state. And we, we call this a high aerial mount installation, also known as a ham. And we will, we will use this type of installation where uh, there's not a lot of, uh, good places to put it at ground height is again, we're constantly as part of our design, we're taking into account all of the design features that we need to be concerned about, right? We're not gonna place these hubs where it's gonna block a sidewalk. We're not gonna place these hubs where it's gonna block someone's view when they're trying to exit and enter their driveway. We also don't wanna put these hubs in, in close proximity to a street intersection to cause you know, traffic situations. Um, so we wanna make sure that you know, we're good partners here and putting them where it makes the most sense. So where we can't find any good options for that, you know, we will basically be putting those up high in that ham installation. So it should be less obtrusive to uh, any of the surrounding uh, lower features. Um, and just another picture here of, of some of the other items that are part of this network. You know, this is a picture of an aerial splice. You can see in that, in that on the left side there where there's that round uh, structure, that red component there is our fiber cable. And on the right side of that, there's a, a cylindrical object that's tied to the strand. We effectually call those snowshoes, but those are where we put, you know, coils of fiber so that when uh, our technicians need to work on, on some of the fiber optic cable, into that, in that box, they can disconnect it from the pole and bring it down to ground level and work on it, either in a van or in a trailer. So just a couple items of, of plants so that if you see them, you'll know what they are. Um, and again, 
probably, you know, last but not least, what's the pricing, right? So we think we've got a very attractive product and we've also got a very attractive price. And again, so $79.99, uh, and that's for one gig of service. So that's 1.0 gigabit, and that's for down download speed and for an upload speed, uh, which we feel is very, very competitive uh, with other providers in the market. But again, we feel that our product is superior in that it is a dedicated fiber line from our office to your house. It's not shared through a neighborhood with some of your neighbors as you're sharing a, a cable TV connection. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people that have that type of service have experienced those kind of delays in the past where you know, you're know you're you're watching a movie online and all of a sudden it starts to pixelate or it's dragging. Uh, and it could be a scenario where some of your neighbors are, are using a lot of that bandwidth at the same time as you are. That should not happen with this particular uh, technology because again, it's it's, you know, it's consistent from beginning to end right to your house. So I've, I've said a lot there in a short amount of time, so I'll be more than willing to take any questions. I know there's, there's a minimal amount of people in the audience, but I'll take questions here, but I will also take them through Zoom. Garrett. Hey, um, before we get started, I just wanna have like a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with you. Sure. And just cause I know, I, just we're really a lot of the questions that I got. You know, sure, absolutely. With, with, the, with the town residents. And just one thing that I do want to emphasize is that at Frontier, they do have the right to put, uh, to install use public utilities in the public right away for the public good. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this project is. It, it's a project that's located in the public right away. Um, a lot of residents may, may think that they own all the way to the curb and they don't. You know, the, the public right of way for the roadway, it extends, depending on where you are, uh, usually it extends to the back of the sidewalk. If you don't have sidewalk, it, may, it might extend probably 10 or 20 feet beyond the curb. That's and, and that's where this project is located. It's located in the public right of way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so as a part, can you just talk about you know, the, the installation where you have to work underground? Because that's where we seem to be getting a lot of our calls, you know, how you're doing the, the tunneling beneath driveways, how you're doing um, sure. you know, the direct burial work. Sure, I'm gonna back up one step further though, sure. because there's a piece that I didn't talk about up front, but it's, it's, it's important to note that, you know, one of the first pieces of the bill that we do is that fiber distribution hub, which is kind of the, the brains of that particular build. So one of the first things we do is we, we take great care in situating those hubs. Part of our process to put those hubs on poles is we're required and we, we send registered letters to the adjacent owners, um, either behind the poles and across the street from the poles that we're looking to put the hubs on. And that basic letter, it was a 15 days, but now it's a 30 day duration where um, the, the neighbor or the resident can call a contact that's on the letter and ask questions, or if they have concerns about our deployment, we'll definitely take that into consideration and relocate that hub to a different pole. So I wanna make sure that everybody's aware of that because you know, we do that on a daily basis and we've, we've adjusted many, many hubs to satisfy concerns there. How about, not to interrupt, but can you talk about the, um, the the door hanger program that you did and you know, to notify the residents? And we had talked about potentially doubling that effort because just the number of calls that we got, some residents said that they that they didn't receive the door hanger for whatever reason, you know, whether it got wet or blew away or something. Sure. sure. But uh, yeah. So basically, you know, as I stated up front, probably 90 percent, 95 percent of our build is gonna be airily on poles, but occasionally some of the newer developments in town, you know, there are zoning laws that basically require all utilities to be underground. So starting in the early to mid nineties, we basically put those facilities generally in conduit um, in coordination with the cable TV company, the phone company and the power company. So in those instances where there are conduits running throughout either parallel with the street or crossing the road, our primary mission is if we we're gonna go buried with this particular project, we wanna utilize spare space in those conduits where we can. So in those instances, we'll do some, some pilot holes, and John, correct me if the terminology is wrong here, but we'll do pilot holes to find those conduits. And if they work for our design, we'll certainly pull our new fiber through them. In an instance where there is no conduit or it's an older development, development that was done prior to the use of conduit, what we'll do is we'll have to, you know, where the cable was known as direct buried. They opened a trench, 
the phone and the cable and the electrical wires were direct buried in that trench. In those scenarios, what we'll need to do is we'll need to create a path to place our, our, our either our fiber or our fiber drops. So generally what we'll do is where there's a road crossing, we'll do a, a trench crossing. If we can, we'll do a bore, a directional bore, which means you dig a pit on either side and you place a, a, a rod through there, which has a, a conduit behind it. So it, it's minimal impact or less of an impact to the roads, which I'm sure, Gary, you like. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little more costly for us, but it, it does a better job in the long run. And then once we get on the other side, basically what we're gonna put is a little box in, and that's the junction point where we'll put our terminals. And I believe, John, you brought one tonight. I don't know if you want yes, to. Yes, sir, here's the, this is the 11 by 11 uh, handhold. Sure. Same range in size from 11 by 11 up to 24 by 36. Yeah. So basically what we'll do is we'll get across the street and where that pit is, We'll place this in the ground flush with the grass level, and then the conduit will come in the bottom. And that'll allow the fiber drop to come up inside. So that when we got a terminal, that'll fit right inside this box below ground. And then as a customer orders service, we'll go to this location and connect the service and then run the drop to the house. Yeah. So also you say when you're doing the, the work underneath the road, you use you use the, the mold or the bore. Yep. Also, you do the same thing when you're tunneling beneath somebody's driveway too, right? That's correct. So, so you don't have to open up the driveway, open cut through the driveway. You can protect and preserve the driveway yep. by digging a pit on either side and That's pushing correct. and pushing underneath. That's pushing correct. Underneath. With a disclaimer, right? If we happen to... <laughs> well, yeah, no, there always is in that work. I know. I mean, this, is I this is a safety disclaimer, right? Yeah. In a, in a lot of cases, there may be a gas line or a water line that's under the driveway. Right. So for the safety of our construction yes. crews, we can't yes. just blindly bore Understood. where there's a, a potential for a gas line. So if there's a gas line present, we need to actually excavate that uh, to ensure that we're not you know, causing some explosions. Right, if you got a utility but, conflict. Correct. Yeah, utility conflict, you have to open yes. them up, of course. People see the markouts on their driveways. <laughs> yes. You know, if they come home and they see you know, spray paint on their, on their grass, that's what's happening. I know, I understood. I, I was just out <laughs> talking with the resident this, this evening about they had uh, there were flags that were all the way up to almost the back door. Yeah, <laughs> it was right. so. So that was a long discussion to get to your original question, which was <laughs> what's going on with the notifications of the yeah. door hangers. Yes, right? keep, going, keep going with the door hangers yes. and notifications. So, so essentially, initially, you know, Parkside was our our construction contractor, and what they did was, you know, as they identify an area that they had to dig or bore or plow, right, they would put a, a door hanger on the on the customer's door and notify them that we're going to be doing some digging. And if you got questions to call. Now, uh, full disclosure, uh, this is kind of our, a, a new project for us. So we were kind of new and just getting up to speed. Um, so we used existing door hangers that were not uh, what you would say suited for frontier communications, so to speak. They used uh, existing stock that they had in place. Uh, well, it was always the right stock. The number, the, there was an issue with the number. Right, that, the phone that number has been resolved. Okay, so there is a project specific phone number now? There is a, the, or is it your number? The, no, sir. It's not my number. <laughs> <laughs> There's an 800 number that goes to one of our, our foremen directed his cell phone voice line. Okay. So if he, he will answer it if it's normal business hours. He'll return your call the next day. Is, is that on the, on the new door hanger? It's, the 800 number is forwarded to his cell phone number. Okay. So but but how, we get, how we get how we get that 800 number to the residents? Is it, is it's, it's on the door It's on the door It's on it's on the the new the, the new door, door hanger. hanger. The, the current door hanger is now forwarded to that uh, new person. So the, okay. the, the, the phone number. The yeah. same yeah. number will now is now forwarded to his cell phone. Oh, oh. Yeah. Because it used to be a, a, a it was a phone number that went to Parkside. Yes. Um, and it was kind of like a generic number. Right. The, the, even I didn't even know what number to push. So basically <laughs> they, what they did was they rearranged the programming behind that number. Okay. They used to run to different potential okay. areas. Now it goes to a foreman that okay. is working frontier product. Okay. The same door hanger, same number. It should the, the phone number is routed to a different uh yes. The, the parts yeah, yeah. So I understand there were some it. issues with the phone tree and that kind of a thing, but yes. now that 800 number okay. directly gets forwarded to our Parkside construction. Doing manager. new stuff. Yes. Doing new stuff. You know, we'll yes. work out some of the wrinkles yes. as we go Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. Um, what else do I have? Some of the, the residents, they're they're very concerned about the restoration. Um, I've been out to talk to different residents, and I see, you know, the, you know, we, we put the, the seed down and, and some mulch down, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, sometimes it grows, sometimes it doesn't. I've even seen where residents where they, where, where they put down their own sod, mm -hmm. um, you know, because they had, 
I guess I'm just thinking, you know, that maybe something more or better may need to be done with the restoration, just because you know, people that you know they don't want to have you know this this strip, you know, through their through their yard. That's not, and and I get it, you know, mm-hmm. construction doesn't uh, construction and improvements don't take place in a vacuum. Understood. You know, they they yeah. don't. You know, there's 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 always some impact. Right. But you know, there's uh, there's, there's got to be ways that we can like, minimize the impact. Absolutely. You know, to to the residents and and. You know, and work with the restoration right. to, you know, if they got, and it's the same thing, you know, I know they got sprinklers, they've got, you know, the invisible fences out there. Yep. Um, this is a note to you folks that are, who have those sprinklers and invisible fences. If you yep. see Parkside in your neighborhood, make sure you talk to them um, because the public utility uh, clearance system does not mark those utilities. They'll mark the public water, public sewer, the public utilities, but your private utilities Meaning of your 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 um, invisible dog fence, your sprinkler. That's your private utility. Does not get marked as a part of that system, and that's your responsibility to work with the, the whole project. You know, to work with the project team, work with the town, work with the frontier, work with the contractor, and uh, and mark those facilities. The best way to do that is to mark it with a flag or mark it with paint, uh, mm-hmm. so they know that it's out there. Um, but also just you know, in talking with the you know talking with uh, the contractor uh, when they're when they're out there is the best way to do right. it. You know, and, and again, I stated it, you know, Frontier has been in, here in Connecticut for well over 100 years. We're not going anywhere. All of our managers are local. So we've been given all the phone numbers to you, Gary. So and if you, they've got issues, they can certainly call any of us. We'll, we'll do what we can to make it right. Because, again, we're not trying to be, you know, argumentative and confrontational with the neighbors. Mm-hmm. We want to be good corporate partners. So we're going to do what Excellent. we can to make it right. Excellent. No, we've had a long-standing working relationship with you guys, Dave. Definitely. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm just thinking for the restoration. You know, once it's seated and sodded, you know, you, you, you'll have to you'll, you have to go back and make sure that it's taking. You know, if, if for whatever reason, if it, you know a big storm comes like last Friday, you know, all the seed Absolutely. and mulch gets all the seed yeah. and mulch, you know, it, it gets washed down the road. Yep. You know, Great. you know that needs to be you know restored somehow. And yep. and you know if some and, and, and maybe and maybe it takes you know putting a, you know, a narrow strip of sod across in some of those areas possibly. Um, just something to something to consider. Absolutely, um, I agree with you. I mean, I mean we're, we're going to be committed to making that uh, excavation area as nice as it was before we got there. Excellent, excellent. I mean, and that, that, that that's what we'd expect. You know, okay. just we expect it to be restored to the way it was before. Okay. Um, yeah, it's really the really the restoration. You know, some of the residents. You know, every time I, I talk to the residents, it's just a coincidence. But I always ask them, hey, you know, did you get the notification? You know, what kind of notification did you receive? And they say, well, we didn't get anything. But uh, you know, so, so so something happened. You know, with the you know the, the the first public relations effort, it just wasn't as successful as I think we all would have hoped it had been. I mean, clearly, clearly, some people got the notice and some people didn't. And for, I, for whatever reason, you know. Is, is there a, are you or is there a way to send the notice the door hangers out again? I mean, I can tell you we've we I've posted the door hangers on the town webpage. Okay. You know, we, we've done we've done as much as we can do to to support the projects and, and get that and get the notifications out okay. too. We put them on the town uh, Facebook page, uh, the, t- the town webpage, the engineering page. Again, you know, this is all just you know the, the stuff we're doing is to yep. supplement the, the work that you guys have done. Um, and I appreciate all the work that you guys have done right. because or else we get more phone calls. <laughs> but, but see, you know, cons- considering the size of the project, right. we Absolutely. haven't gotten many phone calls. But the number of phone calls, we don't get this number of phone calls for hardly anything. Right. <laughs> so, and and I tell you, some of the phone calls, you know, they come to my office, they come to the town manager's sure. office, they end up at the fire marshal's office, they end up they end right. up everywhere. And so just you whoever know, will listen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Now the good news is you've got other numbers. You yeah. Can get yes. So we, yeah. We're certainly going to so, stand by our construction efforts. Excellent. And I mean, we'll talk, and if there's anything else we can do to enhance our notification. So gen- generally speaking, we go TV the neighborhood. So we videotape the street before we do the work mm-hmm. to verify when we're done, it looks like when we start, and we don't damage people's property. When they TV the neighborhood or videotape the neighborhood, they put the door knockers. So the street that they're walking, they white line it for Miss Utility. Got it. They TV it and they put door knockers on. How how soon in advance was that before the actual work was done? Uh, if, it, if it was done like two or three months in advance, no, it's possible. Certain, no, no. Okay, less, less, than, than less than thirty days. Less than thirty days. Yeah. So yeah, the one calls. I get it. Yeah. So we have I get one it. call in order to get a permit from you guys. I get it. Yep. So at that yeah. same time, we're filling our permit out. 
the white line and we, and we or not. Yeah, but it's just, you know, every, everybody's got to just increase the amount of public relations effort that's been done. Again, because it's such, it's such a big project, you know, people are, we're all busy people, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it's like, you know, like, so, you know, the door hanger got blown off or something like that. They just didn't, you know, they, they don't use the front door, they use the back door, the garage door, you know. I mean, that's the way I was in, right. in, the, in the house I grew up in. We used the back door. We never went to the front door. So, um, okay. you know, there's, there's, I'm not, it's just, you know, see we're just all busy people and things happen that uh, some, for some right. reason, you know, some folks did miss the, did miss the initial. I mean, we could look at that, right? Case. If there's, if there's multiple entrances, we can maybe place a second. Door right, there, we can take it back to the team yeah, and see if we can come up with another that's option. That's an easy, yeah, well, you're right. Oh, yeah, no, it really is. Yeah, it really is. To, again, just to, again, to, and to supplement everything that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's sort of like, again, it's, it's unfortunate it's doubling that effort to, to do the door hangers, but um, it's just get, getting the word out. The, you know, that's why we we put so much effort into into this meeting and mm -hmm. all the other, you know, work that we've done to, to get the word out to the, out to the public. Okay. Um, I think that's all I got directly. Hopefully, I, I might have, I probably addressed some of the questions from some of the, uh, sure. some, from some of the residents, but Jane, do you want to... Uh, take some phone calls or email questions. We do have six individuals on the line. Uh, one did have their hand raised, but they have put it down since. So I don't know if anybody is interested. Oh, I do have one, just a moment. I tell you, you did a good job answering the questions. <laughs> you should be live now. I most of them. Um, hello? You there, Councilor Draco? Hi. Hi, Gary. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you, Gary, for organizing this because um, I know we talked several months ago when, like you said, many of us were getting questions. Um, this presentation is, is informative and there's several um, questions or comments I have. First of all, um, will this be available to the public at a later date if they want to view it? Yes, James is recording this uh, presentation on, on the Zoom software. And it will be posted as this was really tomorrow. Actually, it's on Zoom right now, and it'll also be um, handed off to NCTV, and they will be rebroadcasting it as well. Okay. Um, also, um, I came in a little bit late, um, but I was just wondering, from a timeline and a planning perspective, um, say how much of the town have you done so far? When do you expect to complete it? Number one, and then number two um, is can there be a post of like neighborhood by neighborhood, you know, when you're going to be there and, and when that's completed, then move on so people can kind of look and see a schedule? Okay, so basically all of the planning is complete. 99% uh, of the engineering is complete. And I would say at this point, probably 60 to 75% of the construction is complete. And you know, we're down to, uh, you know, the last 25% of the, of the hub placements. And in the areas that still require some some digging, uh, so we're I don't want to say complete, but nearly complete. Okay. And then um, I didn't um, get a chance to review or see the door uh, knob hangers, whatever. But personally, um, if I see something on my door, I assume that it's an advertisement for siding or or something. So I don't know how they're designed, but Maybe um, if, it, if it looks like it's a possible advertisement for roofing or home siding or, you know, selling Wi-Fi, you know, people might just throw it out. So uh, I'm not sure what the design is, but if there's a way that it can be, you know, immediately brought to the attention that this is a important piece of information and not an advertisement. John, is there, is there any catchphrase or anything on the top of that hanger? That it, it has a hard hat on it to let you know it's construction coming to your neighborhood at the top of it. It does say, we are going to be building underground plant in your neighborhood. Okay. The first sentence. doesn't have anything about selling anything. If you have any questions, you have any dog fences, it specifically says, please notify us of those, those questions. Okay, so I don't know if you heard, uh, John, but basically, you know, the, the door hanger is designed in such a way that it kind of leads people to really see first and foremost that this is going to be construction coming soon so hopefully they take heed of that and, and read it a little closer okay um, great i don't know what else we could do with the hangar okay no uh, it's we'll just um, the fact that it's constructed. i'm sorry yeah, just wondering um so thank you very much you're welcome
If we do have anybody else who is interested in speaking, they can use the star nine or the raise hand function within Zoom. Okay, we do have another person. And, and Jean Parker, you should be able to unmute yourself. Use the star six or the mute in the Zoom application. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Um, I just didn't think that you answered the question from that lady about um, plans for when you should be finished in different areas, because right now you're digging up my yard. Um, I was just curious if you could have any idea of putting out a schedule. I would say that probably by middle to late August, we should be 100% complete within Newington. Yeah, that's for the whole town, but what about different areas? Well, no, we're 75% we're complete already, right? So whatever is left should be completed by the end of August. Can we get her information yeah. and let her know when hers is going to be complete? Yeah, if you want to share with us your address, we can take it down and let you know when. You can email me, the town engineer. I'm on the town webpage, uh, Gary, at gfirstenberg at uh, newingtoncp.gov. Okay. Um, I know it's a long email, so that's why you're best to find to look it up on the town injury webpage. And we can do that uh, for your direct neighborhood. Like I said, they're working, you know, about a hundred different locations throughout town. Um, I guess it's possible, but it would be quite the effort to coordinate each location, like on a week by week, you know, uh, schedule. Yeah. And like I said, um, I mean, we're doing about, there was 37 nodes that we're constructing in Wilmington. And about 31 to 32 of those are, are pretty much construction complete without to the last five or six. So yeah. I mean, you've got some overhead work too associated with that stuff and underground work associated with Yeah, most too. of the overhead work is done. We're down to the areas that have mostly digging left, I guess. Got it. Oh yeah. You're definitely digging. <laughs> what can I ask what street you live on? I live on Burden Lane. I know you never heard of Burden Lane. You lived in New <laughs> your whole life, but you never heard of my street. I know. Uh, I recognize most of the streets, but I'll admit I'm embarrassed that I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on that one. It's, but I do it's, recognize uh, most of block, the streets. A block away from Vincent Drive. Vincent Drive, okay. I got it. Yeah, we'll take yeah, that down Vincent and we'll get back to uh, Gary tomorrow okay. with when we think that construction will be complete. Okay. Yeah. You, you know what happened was I saw this, all the writing on the lawn and the, and the road, and I got in touch with the town engineer thinking that it was going to be road construction. And he, and he told me they were going to redo the road. And I did, and then I was shocked when they started digging Sorry. up my lawn. I was like, wait, what's going on here? No, no, we do have an ambitious uh, road project coming up uh, later in September. Yeah, uh, I know. Where we're, we're resurfacing about six miles of road in town. Um, but just so residents know too, the standard protocol for doing underground construction is that the contractor goes out and marks the work in the field. Then they notify the uh, utility clearance uh, uh, Public oh, call, call before, before you dig. Before you dig. I call it the, the public utility. Yep, eight one one. Um, and then the utility companies like the you know, CL, uh, you know, the Eversource, you know, the MDC come up. They mark the water, the sewer. Um, S, um, gas or gas CNG gas. will mark. The CNG will mark the gas. Yep. Um, and, and that and that's to identify any conflicts with the proposed work, and then they can work around the the existing utilities uh, safely. So yeah. once once you see the the markings down on the road, then it's, it's within thirty days that they're going to be working in that in that neighborhood. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else, Jane? We do have one. They are indicated as a phone number, and they should be able to unmute themselves at this time. People hit star six on your phone. Sure, Kim. What is the insulation? What should the construction be completed? What's the insulation time frame for somebody that orders the service to getting it installed? Okay, so once construction is complete. What we want to do is we'll do an end-to-end -end test on that fiber. So from the central office through that fiber distribution hub to the terminals, we'll test every one of those lines. 
and then once it's tested, it's good. We'll uh, then have to do some work in the central office to connect it all, and then it's ready for service. So typically two to three weeks, it's ready to be with people. That so I think what you're asking is this, if you call in and you want our product once we released it for sale, you can get service within 24 to 48 hours. But that's after it's all been tested, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once so, we, it, it doesn't get released for sale until we've tested it and make sure the network is yeah, working. Yeah. But you know, we'll release the neighborhood, and you might get uh, a door. Uh, our door-to-door -door people may come out and visit with you. You may get a direct mail piece from us to let you know that we're in service. And then you call the eight hundred number and say, "I want you know a gig speed from Frontier," and we'll be out within a couple of days. So, do you bring a private line from the school, or you turn it? We will. Yeah. Absolutely, we do. I used to be on the installation and repair side, so and as was, as was Jermaine. So what happens is we actually go to the pole, the terminal that we we showed you a, a picture of. We plug a, a fiber drop from that location right to your home, and we bring that line into your home to a, a, what we call an OMT. Directly inside. It comes directly into the house, and then from there we use your internal wiring or wireless boxes to get to the service. Yeah, well, I still have a phone line from here, and then a separate picture that all. So through the fiber, you can receive phone service, you'll receive the internet service, and if you're an existing uh, video customer, you can get video service. Um, if you still have your copper line and you want to keep it, we encourage you to move over to the fiber because it's a better service, but there's no reason why you can't keep your copper line, but there'll be two different services. But you have choices, which is what we really, really wanted to do is give you folks some choice and, and improve our, our, our product offerings to you guys. Uh, phone number ending in 476, you should be able to unmute yourself by hitting star six on your phone. Oh, hi. There I, would, I, just, I, I would just like to know how far into my loan can you dig? Because I see all these flags up to almost the, the whole whole loan which is like almost 40 yards at uh, 40 feet so you know as gary and i don't know if you listen to the whole presentation but gary kind of alluded to where the town property ends and where your property begins and it varies by street but typically it's between 10 to 15 feet roughly Correct. from the edge yes, of the curb yes. is to where the the town property ends and your property begins okay it's so it's not going to go beyond correct but I see all the flag, flags beyond it. That's the reason I'm concerned. Right, so what, and we started talking about the process of the call before you dig. So when, when our construction crew is anticipating the need to dig, what they will do is they'll go out and paint white, white uh, paint on the road from end to end of the extents of where they're gonna dig. And after they've gotten their town permit and they'll mark that out. And then every utility, will come and mark their own facility. So the water company will come and mark the water. And what they'll do is they'll mark it beyond the extents of where the potential digging might be so that, you know, that our contractor will know where it goes, right? Is it something that runs parallel to the street or is it something that goes to service your home? So that's oh, why yeah. you may see the flags going closer to your home than say the town property begins and ends. It's just so that we know what it is and where it's going when we go to dig. Yeah. Okay. And I hope they do a good job and they're not going to mess up the loan, period. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of us to that. <laughs> because my neighbor had to buy their own grasses to put it on. Yeah. Um, this was this was the neighbor. I was out to this neighborhood okay. this afternoon. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, hi. So, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, the, the neighbors, they actually bought sod and they, mm -hmm. re they sodded the trench. I mean, it looks great, but it's just, you know, some of the other areas, it was just an area, you know, where the, where the, the restoration, it just didn't take for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, you know? and a lot of times it doesn't, right? Either extreme dryness or and extreme it, wetness that we're dealing with now, it's just going to rot the seed. So right. in those instances, as much as it's something we don't like, I mean, it happens, the weather we're susceptible to it. So yeah. we may have to go back and just receive yeah. in some right. cases. You're just right. let us know. You're gonna, you yeah. have to go and check, the, check yeah. those areas, you know. Like I said, we'll stand by. Just, uh, call. You gotta reach look. out back to us because we're not gonna know every, all the areas we touch, but if somebody has a concern, by all means, bring it to us. We'll I mean, right. I was, uh, Jefferson Court, just check Jefferson Court. I, I was out there and I did see some of the areas, you know, where the seed had mm -hmm. washed away or the grass, where the seed was, it was just thin. 
It was, it was starting. It was starting it was start to take, which is good to see, but mm-hmm. it just hadn't. Uh, it, it just wasn't uh, 100% coverage, you know. Right. So uh, obviously, if it's your yard, you know, you, you'd want it to. Great. <laughs> you'd want Absolutely to, understand. Paul. You'd want to restore it the way it was before too. So. Better, better. Absolutely. Excellent, yeah. excellent. I love that approach. Like that approach. Yep. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. Anybody else, James? Nobody else at this time. If anybody else is interested, they can use the raise hand feature inside of Zoom or star nine on their telephone to be recognized. Give folks a few moments to, to react. Jefferson Court. Jefferson Court. That's all from the side. While well, we're at it, at Burden and Vincent, yeah, just that one to know. Give them an idea when they'll be done over there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look like we have anybody else who's uh, interested in speaking at this time. Burden Lane. Uh, all right, James, thank you for uh, emceeing the meeting for us. Uh, with that, I'm going to close the meeting. And if our residents have any uh, questions, obviously they can call the 800 numbers that's on the flyer that's, on, that's been a part of this presentation, or uh, obviously you can call my office too. Thank you. Thanks for allowing us to come in and talk to you, Gary. I appreciate the time. Thanks a lot.